So, in this asynchronous video, we're going to be reviewing the hydrostatics theory, first applied to a fluid in general, and then um, considering a uh, liquid and then a gas with some examples in both cases of how to compute the variation of pressure with uh, depth. Okay, so hydrostatics. This is when you have a body of fluid which is at rest, has a, um, a constant density, and it's continually connected, as we've seen in the previous session. In this scenario, pressure only it varies with depth, it only varies with the vertical depth, which is in general, given the Z coordinates, which is um, something to get used to. So Z is vertically up. <clears throat> and in that case, the pressure will vary only in the vertical direction. And your pressure change will be the same, whether the container is large um, or narrow or has some kind of curved shape. And it's really just the vertical um, distance in a hydrostatic fluid which 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 matters and it, you can think of that as the you know you can understand that by considering that the weight of the fluid is going to be the same the weight of the fluid directly above it is going to be the same whether it's um, a wide or a, or a narrow container and as you go down the pressure will increase so as you get as you get further down and that column of fluid above you increases then so will the pressure at, at that point so conversely, the pressure on a horizontal plane is constant in hydrostatic fluid. It's an important uh, distinction. So while the, the gradient of pressure in the X and Y directions are going to be uh, zero, in the Z directions, it's going to be equal to minus density times gravity, which is also known as specific weight or the symbol gamma. So we can integrate this. We can take our DZ to this side and integrate DP to get P2 minus P1 and integrate the quantities here all together. <clears throat> now at this point we have a choice. We can consider these to vary with um, with distance in the, in the z direction or we, we don't. And what we do exactly what we do in this scenario depends on the on the fluid that we're looking at. So we're going to consider hydrostatic liquid and hydrostatic gas and we're going to consider in the context of you know, a practical example of the ocean and the atmosphere. Okay, so for a hydrostatic liquid, then it's a common assumption and it's a, a, a pretty good assumption to uh, assume that both the density and the gravity are constant with height. If you consider that the maximum depth of the ocean is around 11 kilometers down, as we'll show uh, a little bit later, that variation, 11 kilometers compared to the radius of the Earth itself, which is 6,400 kilometers, is going to have a very small uh, impact on the on the change of gravitational acceleration, so we can we can basically assume that it's constant. Um, and the density, well, for a liquid, they're almost always virtually incompressible, so it's very reasonable to assume that there that there's not going to be much of a, a variation in density with height. So then you can take rho also outside of the integral. And you're left with this expression here, which we're, we're going to be using um, later on. So in contrast, a hydrostatic gas, we're going to, to start with, leave both of these terms inside the integral, and they're going to be a function of z, the vertical distance, and then we're going to consider the assumptions of each one. Okay, so like I said, the ocean goes down to a minus 11 kilometers, and for practical purposes, you probably don't get much, much higher than 20 kilometers for, you know, this is the highest flight. Um, it just space is 100 kilometers, but um, you know, for most practical purposes, the, the pressure almost disappears above this height. So if you consider this um, as the highest uh, displacement in the vertical direction, 20 kilometers, and you consider that against the radius of Earth, like I said before, 6,400 kilometers, um, you can see that it's not a big amount. And then if you consider also that gravity varies with the one over r squared, that difference is, you know, is reduced further. So if you, you can actually see that the, the, the change in um, gravitational acceleration due to whether you're at a radius of on the Earth's surface, 6,400, or at the edge of this, um, of this limit, 6,420, it's going to lead only to a, a variation in the acceleration of only 0.6%. It's pretty small. Um, we're going to neglect it for, for, for the majority of cases, and in particular when we're going to look at the um, atmosphere. On the other hand, gases are much more compressible than liquids, and their density almost always um, is going to have a compressible 
effect. And in fact, the, the density is, is highly proportional to a uh, pressure variation. This is coming from the ideal gas equation. You can see that pressure and density are, are, are directly proportional. And so we need to consider it as a variable. So first, we're going to go through some examples of how to apply this equation in a, in a, in a tank with a stratification of different fluids. And then we're going to go through some example, the example of applying this to the international standard atmosphere. Okay, so for a hydrostatic liquid, as you go down, you're increasing in depth, your pressure is going to increase. So we're going to consider a simple body of water. We're going to assume that at each layer of stratification, the fluid density is constant. And at the surface, at the free surface, the pressure is going to be atmospheric. So uh, we're going to apply this equation that we derived in the last slide. And we've got this scenario here, where we've got four liquids which have settled, so it's at rest, but because of their different densities, some have come out on top of the others. In order to solve this, <clears throat> we're going to start from the known pressure and we're going to work down. So what we want to know is the difference between pressure one and pressure at the bottom, five. If we know that, then we're going to be able to, to find the pressure of the base, either in terms of absolute pressure or a gauge pressure. It's really important to be careful with the negative signs. You see there's negative signs everywhere, uh, and we have to stick to the convention that Z is positive up. If you stick to that and you respect that as you go along, you'll be okay. And in general, if you, if you remember the intuitive um, results that as you go down in a fluid, then your pressure should increase, and you check your answer is increasing as you go down, then that's a, a helpful check to make as you go along. Okay, first thing then is to number your different levels, one to five. And then we're going to calculate the pressure difference step by step. So for the first one, the difference in pressure uh, at point two and point one, we're going to apply this equation directly. We've got density becomes oil times gravity times that difference. I'm not going to put numbers in at this stage. Same for two to three, three to four, and four to five. Now, in each case, uh, these should be increasing. So you're going down, so the, the pressure should be increasing. And you can check that by seeing that if we're saying that Z is increasing in the vertical direction, one of these numbers minus the other, you've always got the highest number after the, the lowest number. So this is going to be a negative value. Uh, this is negative, which counteracts this negative. So you have a positive increase in pressure. So it's again, you have to be careful with the negative signs, but as long as you're sticking to the numbering and the convention of Z up, you should be okay. So then the final step is to group all of these together. And you can, you can almost see how you can do this. If you can make P4 the subject of this expression and substitute it in here, make P3 the sub subject of this expression and substitute it into this one, and make P2 the subject of this expression and, and, and substitute it into here. And then you'll be left with an expression that links directly P1 to P5, which we have here. So P1 is equal to P5 plus these four uh, additions. And this time we've used the symbol gamma to represent the um, specific uh, weight which is rho for each fluid times gravity. And this time we've, we've put the negative through the brackets. So the, the order of the, num the Z numbers has reversed, make it a bit more intuitive. So here you have Z1 minus Z2. And remember Z1 is, is a higher value of Z than Z2. Uh, so this is going to be a large number minus a smaller number. So this is going to be positive. And that's the same for each of these brackets. So as you add each term, you're increasing in pressure, as you would expect. You start at P1, which is known, it's the atmospheric pressure, and you add a little bit more each time you go down. So now we're going to turn our attention to the variation of pressure in hydrostatic gas, and we're going to consider the atmosphere for this. So we're going to start at sea level, and we're going to increase in altitude to the edge of atmosphere. So we're going to vary the pressure. We're going to apply the equation for the change of pressure. So you can see the change of pressure is equal to a constant gravity times the integral uh, where density is a function of height. 
Z. And then we're going to use uh, the ideal gas law to link uh, density to pressure and temperature and the gas constant. So, okay, so first of all, we're going to substitute this in, this, uh, this density variation, and we get this term instead. And then we're going to solve by separation of variables. So you can see that we have dp and then we have p on this side, so we can divide through by p and integrate this together. And we can keep t as a function of z here and integrate an approximation for that variation here. So the, the integral of 1 over p by dp is the natural log of p2 minus the natural log of p1, which becomes the, the ratio in, in natural logs, natural log of p2 over p1. And then on this side, we have two constants minus g, the gravitational uh, acceleration divided by r. And then in the integral, we have um, one over the variation of, of temperature with, with uh, height z. Now, if we look at the atmosphere model itself, you can see that, so from the surface to the edge of the atmosphere, pressure is ex exponentially decreasing and density will follow something similar as you go from more um, air molecules of high density at the surface, high density very directly correlates to a higher pressure, um, to something near to a, to a vacuum at the edge of uh, space. Space generally is defined at, at, at um, starting at 100 kilometers, so you can see that already here it's quite low, by the time it gets to 100 it's going to be very low. Temperature on the other hand is a bit more complicated, <clears throat> excuse me, and it's um, it starts by essentially a linear decrease from a, a something like 15 degrees at the surface to uh, minus around 60, 11 kilometers up. And then it stays constant for quite a long time. And then by this stage, it, it starts to vary in a, in, a, in a slightly different way. But also remember that by this stage, the particles are, um, are spaced out um, a great deal, you know, and their behavior is, is, is very different. Um, the density of this region is very low. So really we're concerned chiefly with these two stages and we're going to approximate them. Uh, first we're going to do this one because it's easier, it's a, a, a constant temperature <clears throat> across a given height and this one is essentially a linear decrease uh, from the, the ground to 11 kilometers. Okay so starting with the first one we're going to say let's assume that this temperature is constant going to plug in a constant value which means we can take it outside the integral and then inside the integral we just have to um, integrate with respect to dz so we get the difference of of z's and um, we have a natural log on this side so we take the exponential of both sides and we get this expression which is a fairly simple representation of how the pressure is going to increase sorry decrease between um, this region just above so 11 kilometers to 20 kilometers so this one here then, slightly more complicated, we're going to assume this negative um, uh, change in temperature is a linear change. So we're going to introduce this, this expression here, starts at a, a certain temperature and then decreases proportional to height z. So we substitute it in to this expression and we get um, something a bit more complicated. So you, you substitute it directly and then you divide through actually by r, sorry b, which means you can then um, isolate the variable term z. Now at this point you might know how to integrate this, you might not, you know we're not going to be testing you on, on your in knowledge of integration. Um, in a situation like this you'd be given uh, an identity and you'd be expected to know how to use that identity. So here is the integral identity, identity for 1 over 1 minus x is equal to minus the natural logarithm of 1 minus x. If you substitute that in, you get this, and you then have to apply it for both um, z and 0. So we're integrating between z and 0 at this stage, um, and you get these two terms here. Now that can be further simplified. You can see that one cancels the other uh, to get um, this expression, which is the, the variation of pressure from the surface to up to a point of 11 kilometers.